So on UFC fight number two, um, let's just go back to the first one a little bit. You know, the longest fight of your pro career so far. You got the finish still, though. But what, you know, as such a young guy, what does experience like that do for you in terms of your growth and your development? I mean, it just shows me something else I need to work on and how far I can really go, you know. Um, that was such a weird fight for me, you know. No contacts for one. The adrenaline dump of fighting on that big stage, you know. Second round just felt like I was moving in quicksand. <laughs> Uh, but when the third round came around, I was like, oh, all right, I got it back. So then all that went through my head was like, energy's back, cool. As soon as I touch them, it's over. <laughs> That's what we did. So, you know, we train for moments like that. We always train for the worst case scenario. And now that we know, you know, something we could be very specific on this time and really work on. And I'm, I'm glad it happened. I'm glad I still got the win. And normally in a learning experience like that, it's not as fortunate for people. Right, so UFC fight number two this week, does it feel any different? Like you can't, even that little bit of experience doing this? It feels so different, man. Last yeah. time I came in, I was like nervous for everything. I was anxious. I was worried about the weight cut. You know, I was like, you know, super irritable, super agitatable. Um, you know, always irritated moving around. Right now, I just feel, uh, feel awesome. You know, I can't wait for it to, um, I, I mean, I just can't wait for the fight to be here. I'm excited. I, I'm calm. I feel great about everything. And it just feels world different. Yeah, you, you cut down to 265, right? Yeah, yeah. I landed at 278. I was 277 this morning. I got to go work out, uh, do two or three workouts today, get down there. But I'm feeling good. Yeah, not many heavyweights are cut down to the limit. You're probably one of a handful in this division. Does right. that, is that an advantage for you, or is, you know, does, what I, does that help you with? Um, I don't know if it's that big of an advantage for me. I know it's an advantage in the fact that I know I'm stronger and bigger than anyone that I'm going to go in there against. And, you know, carrying that weight adds up over the course of a fight, but... Mm -hmm. For me, it's one of those things where I, I just feel kind of, I, my body doesn't feel comfortable at, at 265, you know. I like being, you know, above 12% body fat. I just, I like being there. That's where my body's comfortable. That's where I'm most powerful. Um, so for me, it's it's a really big deal to maintain that. We put a lot of work in strength and conditioning, you know. I think hour for hour is probably what I spend the most time on is my strength and conditioning. So. We're, um, we're very happy with it, we're very happy with where we are, you know. I get up to about 295 after fights, you know. Um, if I didn't have a girlfriend, I'd probably be up to 305 because she likes it. She don't like when I get too fat, so I, I kind of cut it off at 295. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm just, I feel great about it. Yeah, that's awesome. And as such a young guy, you know, only a handful of fights are still developing. What does, like, the break down of your training look like, you know, how much time do you spend working on stand-up versus ground game, or is that, do you kind of divide things? We divide things uh, depending on opponent. Like, I don't watch film of my opponents, my coaches do, and uh, I listen to what they have to say. Mm -hmm. um, so basically what happens now is I'll just give you my day-by-day. -day. I wake up every morning around 6.30. Um, I used to wake up at 5.45, but since I get tested so often by USADA, <laughs> Uh, I've had to modify it to where I don't leave the house till 6.30 in case they come test me and I'm on the road. Yeah. So there's that. Uh, I drive out to Katy. It's about an hour drive. I do my stand-up work there. Then I come back in and right after that I get about two hours off and I do an hour and a half to two, an hour 15, about an hour 45 of strength and conditioning work. That's Sometimes that's lifting and based on what phase we're in, sometimes we're in a hypertrophy phase, sometimes we're in a strength building phase, sometimes we're in a power production phase and um, or a mobility phase, whatever. So I spend uh, about an hour 15, an hour 45 on that, depending on the type of workout it is. And from there, that's Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. And then um, from there, I kind of chill. I go for a three to five mile walk to get my, you know, six hours of total activity in for the day. And depending on that, you know, sometimes I'll go roll somewhere if I feel like it, or, you know, I'll go play basketball or something like that. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays are days, uh, they're a little bit more intense. So I wake up earlier, I do my strength and conditioning around 10, 15, 10, 30. And that's the same thing, hour 15, hour 45, depending on the type of workout. Mm -hmm. And we go from there to, you know, my three to five mile walk. And then at the end of the day, I've got sparring that night. Um, and I do sparring. Uh, for an hour, an hour to an hour 25, hour, hour 25 type of deal. And uh, that's Tuesdays and Thursdays. 
And Wednesdays, in addition to what I would normally do, I go and I do a jiu-jitsu class at 7 p.m. with my coach, and then I do another private with that coach at some time during that week. It's never set. We just text and figure out we're going to go. And then uh, my weekends, you know, I still have my strength and conditioning session. I've got my three to five mile walk. And then from there, that's when I kind of leave it open to if someone invites me to go out to a gym or if they need help for their fight, I'll go help people with that. Or um, if nothing comes up, then it's family time, which is pretty active. I've got a five-year-old nephew that demands quite a bit of attention. Yeah. And uh, my girl's got two dogs, so I play with the dogs, walk them or something. But... That's, uh, that's pretty much my entire week right there. So I train anywhere from four to six hours a day. Yeah, very interesting. And with that type of schedule, I mean, can you notice yourself rapidly developing and evolving from, you know, not even just camp to camp, but day to day, I imagine? Definitely, man. You know, it, it's crazy. It's, we'll work on something Monday and then Wednesday I'm doing it, you know. Um, I'm doing it in drills. It's part of the it's part of the combos we're working. It's part of the game plan. and. That's great because I know as I get older and, you know, if my body won't allow me to do this, uh, do it that intensely for that much longer, it, it, that's going to slow down. So I'm appreciating that while I have it. Yeah, absolutely. You, I know you said you don't watch tape, but what do you know about Arjun Miller? I know he's a, you know, he's a high level wrestler on paper. Um, I don't think his wrestling, if it is better than mine, it's not that much better than mine. And it's not going to make up for the gap in size, strength and athletic ability. Yeah, absolutely. And what would you feel like beating him means for you? Is it just another step up the ladder, another win in your For country? me, yeah, it's another step up the ladder. It's another opportunity to silence people that doubt me. Um, that's all it is. You know, it's, it's a business. I don't have any ill will towards him. You know, I'm not really trash talking him at all. Uh, I talk about the, the wrestling thing because that bothers me a lot when people are like, well, his wrestling is so great. I'm like, my wrestling's great. I don't know what you're talking about. I was D1, bro. Leave me alone. So... Uh, but you know, I you know, I actually outside of like fighting, I respect Arjun a lot and what he's done. Uh, he's definitely a pioneer in the sport, so um, you know, best wishes to him. But when he steps in that cage, you know, it's, it's a different story. Yeah. Why? Why do you think people doubt you? I mean, you're a young fighter. You're working hard. It seems yeah. like you're doing all the right things. So what's well, there to mostly my social media. Like, I think it's so boring when fighters post their training videos on social media. My social media is all about you know. Hating on Greg Hardy, because I hate him. And, uh, you know, talking about people I don't like. And, you know, I do my poop stories. A lot of people enjoy those. Uh, I've got a high demand for those after the fight, actually. And, you know, I, I just post what I do day to day, having fun. You know, I'm having fun right now. It's what I'm supposed to be doing, so. Yeah. And I you got asked since you mentioned Greg Hardy there, what did you think of his fight last weekend? Pathetic. <laughs> Well, was that more pathetic from him or the opponent? Both. Uh, it was just ridiculous. You know, it looked like the guy was scared to do anything. And, you know, I'm not going to say much, but I, I think it's ridiculous how they're trying to push such a poor product on people. And people are smoking. Like, we don't want to see that crap. You know, it's not a good fight. He's not a good fighter. And, you know, he's had cans his entire career. The most legit guy he's fought was Alan Crowder. Like, Come on, like that, that's not a world beater by any by any stretch of the imagination. And at every point in his career, he's taken the easiest fight available. Every point in my career, I've taken the best fight available. You know, who the best guy was that was going to come at me. And I think it speaks volumes and it shows, diff it shows when we fight, you know. I fight guys that my level or on paper that are supposed to be better than me and I still come out on top. He fights a guy that's, you know, another up-and-comer and gets DQ'd because he's scared, can't even lose the right way. So, <laughs> that's, that's all there is about Greg Hardy. Yeah, I saw, you know, in the fall of that fight, people do their matchmaking calls and stuff like that. And I saw some people suggest maybe he fights the winner of this fight. Do you think that's something that could come together? Yeah, uh, yeah, he fights the winner or loser of this fight. I think me and Arjun both mopped the floor with him, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, focus first on Arjun. I mean, yeah. uh, how do you see yourself getting this win game and stuff? Uh, I see it as a first or second round TKO, honestly. Just like all my other fights. I don't think this one's going to the third. If it does go to the third, I guarantee you he's going to look a lot worse than I am.